Rebuilding a Stuart 5A steam engine, this is part 9. Solving the slide valve problem, making an exhaust manifold and running the engine. And I'm starting in reverse order, I am running the engine. And as you can hear, it makes a really horrible noise and it doesn't run well. And the arm that operates the expansion link is a bit loose. But apart from that, at least it's running, which is more than it did when I actually got it to work on. I'll see if it goes in reverse. Uh, no. My compressor is having difficulty keeping up with this engine. Most of the time is because there's something wrong with it. But some of the air is blowing out of the inlet manifold. So I quickly make a gasket and then I trim it off with my sharp scalpel, as shown previously, a few times. Then I repipe up the engine, connect it to an air supply, and once again run the engine. At least the engine is running. Whilst the engine is running, and it's running very badly in my opinion, and it makes a horrible noise, but at least it is running in and becoming less tight. Every time you see these bursts of power, and they are short bursts because as I said in the last episode, it flattens my compressor in no time at all. My compressor cannot keep up with this engine. What I propose to do is let the compressor pump up, and each time the compressor pumps up, I will then empty it through the engine, therefore running the engine. And while that's happening, I'll find something else to do. And I'll start by making an exhaust manifold. And by the time I checked the measurements and filmed this, the compressor had some more air in the reservoir. So I quickly ran the engine, but it didn't have enough air in the reservoir so the engine ran for an even shorter time. By this time, I thought I'd better let the compressor cool down because it's been running a lot more than it's shown on here. And my compressor is a very quiet compressor, but it's a little bit like a fridge compressor, and it tells you in the instructions not to run it for too long. So while I was waiting, I used a piece of brass just like this one, and the process is as follows. First of all, I turned this piece of brass and ended up with a shape just like you see in the inset picture. Before parting off the blank, I drilled a hole in the centre of the piece and threaded it half inch by 32 threads per inch. Then I cleaned up the mating surface, then I ran the steam engine again, because the compressor had cooled somewhat by this time, and it still ran very badly. And I did notice that the steam engine had a remarkable lack of power, and it didn't run for very long at all, and it sounds very wheezy and horrible. I mean, just listen to it. At this point, I went into the house, had a cup of tea, and flicked through some magazines with pictures of high public buildings that were suitable for jumping off. After which, I came back in the workshop, finished the exhaust manifold, made a gasket, and mounted it on the engine. This time, I didn't try and run the engine. I turned the air pressure control on the compressor down, and just turned the engine over. And this told me exactly what was happening. I knew anyway what was wrong with it. I've heard all these telltale noises many times before. To confirm this, I pressed the valve hard against the port face with my thumb, and then I used a screwdriver, and you can see the valve is still moving, so it cannot be held hard against the port face. And as it's only air pressure or steam pressure that holds this against the port face, you can see exactly what's wrong. The hole in the centre of the valve is too small, and the valve has been held off the port face by the valve rod. This clip shows me fitting some lock nuts to the studs which are a little bit long underneath the cylinder. And what I was really doing was remachining the hole in the valve. I had it in the milling machine and I was using a slot drill to elongate it. And when I refitted the valve, it sat flat against the port face. So I reassembled the engine and then I thought I'd have a quick look at the cladding. The cladding is painted this unsuitable red colour. And if the paint had have been perfect, I would have rubbed it down and used this as an undercoat, but there were some blemishes in the paint and chips. So I'm taking off all the paint, and I'm going to spray it satin black. So there will be another painting feature coming up in the final episode. And here I'm fitting the two drip feed oilers from 21st Century Steam Company. And what I generally do with these oilers is I half fill them with oil, but I lubricate the engine through the small hole at the bottom of them. I like to save the best till last, and I'm not starting it by flicking the flywheel. I just open the compressed air valve and move the reversing lever. And this is what happens. The engine now runs in both directions. This is reverse. And this is forward.
The engine is still tight because of the close engineering tolerances that I keep mentioning, but if I repeatedly run this engine on air, using plenty of oil obviously, it should become quite smooth by the end of the week. All I have left to do is to make some studs for the steam chest to replace the missing ones, and paint and refit the cylinder cladding. And then that's it, the engine will be ready to go. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. <laughs>